Tell me about the school. What am I seeing here? What are, what's this? My name is Darlene K. Mine, and I'm the executive director of the Community Learning Center Institute. Teeth up on the top of the roof? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's interesting that you call it teeth. For the past 10 years, uh, the Institute has been an independent nonprofit dedicated to the creation, promotion, and continued advancement of community learning centers. Uh, Cincinnati Public Schools developed uh, this uh, concept of what others know to be community schools, which is essentially a hub of partnerships that are co-located or in some other way selected and connected to the school to address all of the conditions that are necessary for learning, and we refer to those as community learning centers. And at this point in time in Ohio, community learning centers are primarily connected to traditional public schools. In 1970, in Cincinnati, we had 90,000 students in Cincinnati public schools. About 70% of those students were middle class and above. There were also about 500,000 people living in the city of Cincinnati. So we were at a very high point and we were thriving. By 1999, we had 45,000 students in Cincinnati public, so about half in 29 years. And um, of that 70%, it was a mirror image, 70% below the poverty line. And again, the inextricability of the linkage between the success of schools and the success of the community, we lost 200,000 people from the city of Cincinnati. We were, as a city and as a school district, in great crisis. The Cincinnati Public Schools tried very hard to come up with reforms, um, new, new curriculum, computers, anything that would um, create maybe uh, an excitement and a belief that things were changing. And the district really found absolutely no results because the trust had been lost between the community and the public school system. When we started developing community learning centers, it was in connection with the rebuilding of all of the schools as a result of a mandate from the Supreme Court of Ohio that all schools needed to be um, upgraded to be safe, warm, and dry. They were in very poor condition. And at the time, Cincinnati Public Schools passed a policy that every neighborhood, every school would have the opportunity to create their school as a community learning center. Regardless of their academic functioning, regardless of socioeconomics, the idea was really an opportunity to be able to create every school as a center of its neighborhood. The city of Cincinnati is comprised of 52 distinct neighborhoods. There are typically at least one school um, in each neighborhood, each with its own community council and really its own culture. We refer to those neighborhoods often as each neighborhood is its own country, but it literally is all under the city of Cincinnati. My background is as an attorney, um, and so I didn't have a professional planning background, but I approached it um, with the very same um, expectation that people in the community, what would I want if this were my child? What would I want if this were my neighborhood? And it just was being a very honest, um, genuine kind of relationship, building um, with one by one with people in the neighborhood that helped me bring other people to the table. And ultimately, that process became, um, and is still th to this day, um, a very, very unique hallmark of the foundation for community schools in Cincinnati or community learning centers in Cincinnati. There are two important elements to sustainability for the community learning centers that uh, we've developed in Cincinnati. One is grounded in community engagement. The, the amount of time and heart and work that the entire community has been involved with in each one of our community learning centers really um, sustains it. And, um, and so making sure that you have all of those folks that are always genuinely connected and owning their community learning center will sustain that no matter what the changes in all of the other kinds of political and, and administrative um, hierarchies there might be. 
Secondly, financial sustainability. We knew from the very beginning that the reason that public education went into so many um, dips is because there was an inconsistency in funding. So sometimes there would be a tax levy and sometimes there wouldn't. And sometimes the political winds would uh, shift funding and you would be without. So we knew that we had to build a system where all of these supports and all of these partnerships and everything that wasn't strictly teachers, books, you know, the building itself would be taken care of by other natural revenue streams. So what can you see now? Can you see everything? Can you see everything? <laughs> That's wonderful. You look wonderful and most importantly, you can see wonderfully. I think the, the process of remaking or, or improving public education um, really begins and belongs to the public themselves. And I think that perhaps where we've gone off the rails a little bit is um, thinking about what's good for them, good for other people. And I have never, ever been disappointed by the wisdom, by the insight, by the passion of the people that we're, that's what community engagement is about.